still evades me a little bit because it's like a magic trick and I, I, I want your input on it. When a therapist sits down and they do a preference assessment and you were saying, you know, three to five things and I laid a couple of things out here, a blue pen, a white pen and a, and a glue stick. And, and so I know I, I need to get real toys here to have, to have. <laughs> but anyway, so the, the, we wait to see which one the child goes to pick up. They pick up the glue stick. Now what, what becomes hard for parents is that now the child either, either they've reached for it or they want it. And now we need to get it back so that we can move these things around to have them pick again. And if they pick the glue stick again, we need to get the glue stick and set it aside so that the child knows if you do the next thing, you're going to get this as the reinforcer. Therapists do this and it, and it looks all fun and the child is all happy smiles and everything is wonderful. Parents do it and we're not quick enough or we're too nervous about how we do it. Um, but it feels like we're taking it away from the child and teasing them with it. And I have never seen a therapist do it that it looks or feels that way to the child. Yeah. But anytime I've tried to do it, I feel self-conscious about it. And I don't know whether it's just the way I'm feeling, but give us the secret for well, what, what it is you do right so that we'll know what we're doing wrong. When we first lay the items out and then they choose one, you can let them play with it for a few seconds and okay. you can play with them with it. So okay. if it was the glue, then I might pick up the glue and but we'll pretend this is a spinny toy or something. And right. like, oh, you like the spinny toy and press the button and we both go, ah, awesome. Yeah. And then I just quickly move the stuff. Okay. And then I go, I pick think so. one. And then they get it right away again. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, the other thing though, I would say is that they probably aren't too happy at first with the therapist taking the stuff away, but they also learn very quickly how, that they're going to get it back. Yeah. So maybe it's just a matter of not repeating, repeated exposure with you doing it as a parent. You don't okay. do it all the time. So we need to hang out and do it more probably, often. Probably, yeah. And I do think that what will come with doing it more often is that we will get more confident that we know what we're doing and we'll be able to do it faster and you know do it with because i think speed is part of it and i think that the way you guys handle yourselves and that you're totally calm and you're totally focused on the child and not self-conscious about it and spinning things and playing with them i think you yeah. know what's going to happen and the child feels that <laughs> Whereas with the parents, you know, we're like, oh, I don't really know what I'm doing. And the child is a little, feeling a little at sea as well. Perhaps, yeah. But I think that if you were to do it a few More. times, yeah, they would get okay. quite used to that. Plus, there's a different uh, uh, interaction between a child and their parent. That's true. You know, um, there's more baggage on the table. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the truth. And there's baggage underneath the table and it's parked by the door because we have baggage, good and bad baggage with our kids. We, we don't like it when they're uncomfortable. We don't like to see them be unhappy and they know how to push our buttons. Our kids are bright. Yeah. Um, and with you guys, you come in and it's a clean slate and you've already dealt with 35 million kids so that, you know, <laughs> they're not going to push your buttons. And I think they get that too. Yeah. Uh, all right, so you do the preference assessment, and part of the key is that you 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 don't just this. I, and I we all need to remind ourselves that we should be doing preference assessments more often, because we as human beings, what we want at ten o'clock changes at ten fifteen, mm -hmm. and and the fact that we don't allow our kids to change their minds about that is not good. Right. Okay. So yeah, it's very important. So just like voting, frequent and, <laughs> right? What's the thing that they say about vote often and frequently? <laughs> preference assessments. Early and often, uh, Kelby tells me. So early and often on the preference assessments. Uh, okay, so we, we're doing the preference assessment. Now we've identified for this moment in time that the glue stick is more reinforcing than the blue pen and the white pen. It's more preferred. We don't really know if it's reinforcing until we ah. use it as a consequence and see if it increases the behavior. Right, because we may think it's the most reinforcing reinforcing thing in the world and the child picked it but if it doesn't make the behavior happen more often it's not really a reinforcer. Yeah and remember preference is all relative to the other items on the table so if you put a bunch of non-preferred items on the table they're going to pick the most or the least <laughs> right. non-preferred I guess. But the truth is it may not be power or not powerful enough to be a reinforcer it in could, which case you got to go back to the drawing board. Possibly yeah. Okay. So think about that. When your child is not responding and you're going what's happening why aren't they getting it it could be a lot of reasons um, but one of those possible reasons is that this isn't functioning as a reinforcer. Okay. <laughs>